And the primary thing I think would be helpful is from a family team's lens, how do we raise daughters differently? Right? It's like, look, if, if, if this is what happens when you raise daughters to be sons, or you just erase gender during the, the period of time when you raise kids, and you just, you just treat sons and daughters the, exactly the same way, this seems to be the predictable result, is that daughters become more like sons, and they become rewarded to the degree that they achieve things in a traditionally masculine way. And this is going to just feel like dissonance when it comes to the call to someday become a mother. Um, and, and this is, this has been a very confusing mixed, mixed messages that we've sent. So April, I'll start with you and we'll, we'll go around. I'd love to get your guys' thoughts on this. Yeah. Well, I, I'm remembering, um, back when I was in college or like the year or two leading up to college, um, trying to put myself back in that mindset. And I definitely was not thinking about these kinds of questions at all. And I grew up in a pretty conservative family, conservative school, conservative church, you know, region of the country. And still the the obvious thing that I was going to do was to go to college. And um, I remember having some some thought that I didn't complete, but it was just like this circling thought that would come every now and then. Why am I doing this again? Like what what am I doing? Because I think I'm probably at some point gonna want to get married. I think I'm probably gonna want to have kids. And if I do that, then why am I trying to get a business degree? Like I don't <laughs> I pictured myself sitting in an office in a cubicle and was like, I don't actually want to do that with the rest of my life. So I just remember having that question mark of like, why am I doing this? Yeah. Um, but you just did it because that's what everyone was doing. And that's what that's the trajectory of life. You graduate from high school and then you go to college and you get a degree because degrees are important and that's how you get a good paying job and all that stuff. And those are not bad things. Those are not evil things, but they do set you on a trajectory and they do shape your mentality about um, these things. And so I think um, a huge thing I had in my favor was I did grow up in a in um, you know, my mom stayed home with us. She was college educated. She had a job before she had us kids. And then she decided to quit her job and stay home with us. And I had the benefit of having a mother who stayed home with us. And um, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family on both sides of my family. So there was a lot going for me in terms of uh, being able to kind of break out of the norm and think a little bit differently. At, at some point I got there. But I, I, the, the flow of the culture is so strong and kind of, I think the, the gentleman on that, he's, he said like, why would you put all that work into your career and then just right. stop it? Like, I understand that. Like that does, yes. um, that does, why, why would you do that? That doesn't yeah. make a lot of sense. So you have to have something that shifts your thinking or something that you believe or come to believe that is much stronger than that flow. Right. To it, interrupt yourself. It has been really confusing. And we've had lots of conversations and, and with other parents and families. And obviously now that we've had, you know, a couple of daughters, now we have three daughters who are adults going into this season and or have gotten through this season. It's, it's interesting because I think part of what's happened is that co because college has gotten so expensive, uh, the return on investment that you get from college has to be higher, right? If you're going to go into debt, that's going to take five to 10 years or more to pay off, then it's really important that you, uh, you get the benefits from all of that money that you spent on your education. And so this has created a, a really difficult dilemma, I think for women in particular, because if they decide that they do want to stay home with their kids and they still are in a ton of debt, or they feel like they've invested so much in their education that they're not getting any return and that it makes them look at everything they invested and they're thinking to themselves, why did I do that? Um, this, this creates, I think, an, a, sort of a, some, an assumption that, well, we've got to delay having kids um, and got to delay motherhood. And, and then it creates all these impossible tensions. And I think part of what we've done is we've tried to separate, I guess, three things that I think kids need when they enter into kind of 18, 19, 20, 21, that kind of adult college age, that they need education, they need community. Um, and they need credentials, right? Depending on, on, on what they are going into. And I think one of the things that we've said to our daughters is don't worry about the credentials. 
Like just throw that away. <laughs> um, and that's, that freed us up to think about things very differently. If, if they need the credential, then obviously getting a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, going into all the debt, all that stuff becomes very difficult. Um, but you can get education and you can get community in many different ways today without necessarily paying uh, for the credential. And I would say the credential is 80% of the actual cost. The education, the community, there's lots of ways, lots of less expensive ways to get those things. And so we're not going to go into detail how we did that. There's lots of things we've, we've done and we are doing with our kids. Uh, but one of the things I would just say that we, we've done when it comes to daughters is we told daughters, do not worry about the credential. Um, that is so expensive. And if you choose to have children at a fairly young age, it's going to, it's going to really potentially compromise that decision. Um, and so that's, that's one way to kind of frame or think about this.